I'm gonna show you guys how to engrave with the Xtol P3 and the F2 Ultra. We are working on this huge ax that fits right inside of the P3. Even though we're working on one project, I am sure that what you will see and learn today will help you with really any project that you make. Let's get to it. So one cool thing about this ax is this is being commissioned for a retirement gift. We are going to put the individual's name right here with the P3 and then engrave the head with the F2 Ultra. And something you need to know about the head, this is powder coated and they did such a good job at this. So let's get started. Now, as we put this in here, something interesting to point out is just how big this P3 is. This ax, let's go ahead and measure it, 35 inches long. So the axe handle is at a slight angle. The wood is a little bit just tilted up this way. So I'm going to take this pin and I probably should use something else. I'm gonna put this right up underneath here and that's not going anywhere. I'm going to line this up just with my eyes here, make sure that we're straight across and this wood is pretty level right here and I don't think that pin is going anywhere. Now let's hop over to Xtool Studio. We can see here that we are connected to the P3 and we have nothing on our canvas. So we have to take a picture. This is green up here. So I am going to close this. It's going to take a picture. It's gonna auto measure it. And there we go. I got that pretty lined up, didn't I? To add a text, we are going to go to the left side of the software and click on text. I'm gonna click on engrave here and then enter the guy's name. Now, obviously with a font, we want something a little bit more elegant. And for that, we are going to go with a serif style font. And you can see that I have been using this Libre Baskerville here. And if we go down, we can just find some different ones. If you see, this one is a sans font. It's more of a comical style font, and it's not conducive for rapport of what we're going for. This is more of a high end, hey, here you go. Here is your retirement gift piece. So we probably need to stick to that serif or something like it. Now these aren't bad, they're just a little basic and I want something, I'm always extra guys. The cursive is cool, but you also wanna be careful with pieces like this because just cursive written on an ax, just it, it's not, like I said, conducive for a rapport of what we're going for. That's not bad. In fact, I think I'm gonna go with that. So now we are going to line this up, increase this to right about there. Now I'll be honest with you guys, the camera placement's accurate but we can double check it to make sure it's gonna be spot on. Okay, guys, now we are going to go here to close shot. I am gonna take a picture of this and let's see how accurate we are. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm pretty confident that this is going to engrave in the right place, but we can do a test with painter's tape. I'm gonna put one more for good measure. And yes, I just redid this because the camera couldn't see me doing it. Now we are going to close it. The software is going to take another picture. Okay, look, we are in the same spot. I'm gonna go to score. I'm gonna put this at 1% power and 400 speed. I have my air purifier set on like 20%. I probably need to turn it up just a little bit. Okay, it looks great, but guys, I, I hope I didn't burn through the wood. I think I may have, but the placement looks really good. I cannot believe I just did this. Okay, I didn't burn through the wood. Oh gosh, <gasps> ah, I moved it. You know what guys, I barely etched some of the edges of this, but it's hardly noticeable and it just fits in with the rest of the wood. I would have had to sand this whole dang thing. Okay, <laughs> let's get to it. I am going to make the executive decision to make it all caps. Now we introduced a problem. You see the font right here, these T's are too close together. So we're gonna go up here to this part right here. And as I hit spacing, look at what happens. Obviously we don't want it that far apart, do we? Um, 0.3, let's look at it. See the T, the little part in between may go up just a little bit more. Now, even though the letters are a little farther apart, that doesn't look bad because this is a big ax handle. And when you look at this ax, you're gonna see the whole thing, right? You have to take this design into account to the material you are engraving. I can get away with this. I am gonna go ahead and do a close-up shot. And I don't mean to be biased, guys. This P3 is just so easy to use. <laughs> I'm a little high. Do I wanna be high? 
I want to be bigger. So we are gonna go here, let's increase the size. Some of you are gonna be upset with me because I am eyeballing where the middle's at. So this is looking pretty good. As far as the engraving speed, usually you want to go lower since it's on a gantry. So I am gonna take the speed down to 500. I don't know what to use for the power. What do I wanna use? We're gonna start out with 40 and 500 lines per centimeter. We're gonna take this up a little bit more to 200. Normally I'd go up more. You guys ready? I'm a little nervous. Okay, we went up to six minutes. I could probably cut this in half to about three if I wanted to, but I wanna go slower. Wish me luck. Okay, wow. That looks fantastic. I wanna be very careful not to move it too much. It's etched in there great. I should have went up on the power just a little bit. And in fact, I think I will. So I want you to look at the letters right here. Running this again on a second pass, moving up to 60% power with the same speed has given us a deeper engraving as well as darkening up the lettering, which is always nice. Okay guys, let's look at this. Wow, the engraving is fantastic. Now we are actually gonna spray this with some alcohol and I am just going to rub across there, get all that's set and everything off and look at this. I am so excited about this one. Boom, come on, look at this. Would y'all look at that? Just look at it. Just look at that. The camera's focusing on my face. I'm so sorry, I have to get really close to you here. But look at the quality. Come on. The P3 is so accurate in the camera placement and it's refreshing to see that in an industrial machine where I can stick this big, huge, long freaking ax into just like this and engrave it. It's saving me so much time over the F2 Ultra or F1 Ultra in terms of using the conveyor feeder. But speaking of the F2 Ultra, we now have to engrave the head and I have to do something extra to the engraving I'll show you in a second. This is the spot where I'm supposed to tell you guys to subscribe. I mean, you don't have to, you can if you want to. I mean, it's not gonna hurt my feelings or anything. You know, if you don't, um, it, it would hurt my feelings. Just go ahead and just, just kinda, you got it, thanks. Now we are moving over to the F2 Ultra to engrave the head. And if you look, I have this whole wall dedicated to the F-Series lineup. This is probably my favorite room in the house. I have my beautiful P3 and all my... Anyways, I'll quit nerding out, I'm sorry. And I think the best way to do this is to put it in this way. So we probably need to open these and just kinda... This is a interesting layout. And once again, I'm gonna take my trusty pin, and this is just the perfect height right here. It's getting pretty level. I'm not sure if you are seeing the blue and red dot. We are going to overlap that. Well, my pin is failing me. You guys might remember this from my other Xtool laser review. There we go. Now let's hop over to Xtool Studio. You can see I have already brought my design in here. There we go. Okay, I am a little off sides. I am going to push this up just a little bit this way. I'm going to refresh this image. Okay, this is looking pretty accurate. I'm feeling this right about here. Now something to point out, this is a powder coated head. So my overall objective is not to do a crazy deep engraving, but just to get through this powder coat. But I think 100% power, and normally I would go lower than this, but I'm gonna go with 2000% because this is really an experiment. As long as I don't touch the ax head, we should be good. Now, if we look at the frequency settings down here, usually the lower the frequency settings, it sends fewer, stronger pulses for deep engraving. As I move the frequency slider forward, that gives us more pulses, but it's usually less powerful and it's more for detailing and things like that as far as cleaning up. It's apples and oranges right here. I'm gonna keep this around 80, guys. I think we should be fine. Now, no matter how good any type of camera is on any brand of laser, you always want to run a frame. And I'm gonna do a rectangle, but we also have an outline. So if I hit this right here, it is going to run a frame. 
So you can see this is a little too far over here. I need to go over here. I'm gonna go to outline. That's the one I like right there. If this design here didn't have sharp edges and it was rounder, it would look much better. It's just when you run into different materials like this, you need to line it up right in the middle here to make sure that your placement is good because your eyes can fool you. I have the AP2 air purifier. I'm gonna turn on. Now watch this, I'm gonna take this napkin and put it against the exhaust. This is not going to pull as hard, but it is gonna help save my filters. That powder coating is on there. We are going to run this slower. I'm gonna take this down to about 800, I think. I'm gonna run three passes on this. I just need to get all that paint cleared out of there. Okay guys, you can see how my little homemade filter is working here. One thing cool I wanna point out, do you see how this right here is darker than this? That is because of the heat treatment of the blade. They differentially, if I said that correctly, heat treat, so this part of the blade is softer than this. And you are seeing that in real time. So the next thing to do here is run some cleaning passes, I think. Okay guys, you can see the cleaning passes here and what it is doing. It is going through there, taking away all the burn marks. And we did that by increasing the speed of the laser and moving the frequency up. Now there is going to be slight discoloration between the top and the bottom, simply due because of the heat treat. But you can see at every level of the pass that this is getting cleaner and cleaner. I ran a lot of cleaning passes on this, but like I said, this heat treatment causes this part to be a little bit darker. So if I turn this, you can definitely see, but we are going to do our best to clean this up. And what I am going to do is to use a magic eraser and some water. Just go back and forth and clean all this up. That definitely looks better. Next thing we are going to do is to add some flitz metal polishing paste to this. And we can go by hand and do this right here. It's something I do want to try. Since this Cerakote is pretty tough, I am going to use my Dremel. I'm just going to go along here. I have to be careful because I can buff away the Cerakote, so I'm just going to go light and be fast. Just getting in all the cracks and crevices of here. This is just gonna help clean everything up. Much better. Only thing to do now is to go through with the blue napkin and see the smudge marks over here. I'm just gonna just lightly sit here for a few minutes and just buff like this with this napkin and it will get all of that out. When you get in the right light, you can see how this just shines up. Now, the only thing I don't like, you see that, like I said, that is the heat treatment. There's really no getting around that unless you just spend a ton of time and just split that design up and keep engraving. But overall, I am pretty happy. I have a little bit more buffing to do over the paint. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, as we go down here, I need to tell you guys something. CO2 lasers will not burn as much as diode, and therefore, when you engrave wood, diode lasers, they usually give you a darker engraving. Not that CO2 is bad, but we are going to darken the letters up just a little bit so we can add to that pop. Now we are going to stain the inside of the lettering. Like I said, it doesn't look bad, but I want the extra pop. I am using Jacko Bean stain, and instead of just rubbing this all on here and making a big mess, I'm gonna take my time and use a little paintbrush. And I'll still have to wipe here and there, but I just wanna avoid all messes if necessary. That's already looking better, guys, wow. Okay, time for the finished product. Look at this 
right here. It looks fantastic. The stain was an excellent idea. And as far as the head right here, I got this cleaned up pretty good. And I'm sure there are some other techniques out there to get this a little bit cleaner than what I did, especially on a blade that has different heat treatments, especially with poor quality steel like these Harbor Freight axes. But overall, I am so happy and it didn't take me any time at all. The hardest part of this was shooting and editing the video. I will tell you guys this, and I need to say this unbiasedly, the x P3 CO2 did great. I just like dropped my text over there and hit engrave and it worked. And the x F2 Ultra was fantastic as well with just simple settings. But here are the results that I got. So basically this is like a day in the life with me, mistakes and all. And this is how I basically use all my lasers to create products like this. Now I usually hand carve these axes but this was a fast turnaround and the client needed it now and their budget is not as high as a handmade axe. Now I imagine since this is family that this is going to this will be around ah, I'd say a 40 or $50 job to be nice. Anyway guys I hope you enjoyed the video and if you are getting into a laser engraving and you want to check these out I do have my affiliate links below. I usually get a little bit of kickback on them if you go through them but I will try to have the best price is posted in them below but i hope you found value in this and hit that thumbs up and subscribe and join all of the creators here we are having so much fun i will talk to you later friends